Hello, uh, this is Dr. Philip May. I'll be speaking with you today on the evaluation and management of Angelman syndrome for primary care physicians. And much of the information for this presentation was borrowed courtesy of the Angelman Syndrome Foundation. To learn more about Angelman Syndrome, all participants of this educational activity are encouraged to visit the ASF website at www.angelman.org. Historically, Angelman Syndrome is named after a British pediatrician, Dr. Harry Angelman, who first described the syndrome in 1965. Angelman syndrome is caused by absence of the normal maternal contribution to a specific region of chromosome 15. Most commonly is caused by deletion of a segment of that chromosome. And this was discovered in 1987. However, the precise Angelman gene, UBE3A, was not identified until 1997. Some of the signs and symptoms of Angelman syndrome are listed here on this slide. I've highlighted some of the most prominent symptoms in my experience in red. Uh, just to summarize, the, uh, the symptoms uh, tend to be very functionally severe. Uh, there's a severe developmental delay. Uh, there's a movement or balance disorder, usually uh, ataxia of gait and or tremulous movement of the limbs. Uh, the behavior presentation is very unique. Uh, people with Angelman syndrome tend to, to smile a lot. There's frequent laughter. If you walk into a room of people with developmental disabilities and you notice that someone is smiling, uh, this person may have uh, Angelman syndrome. So. Uh, Seizures are, are very frequent. Uh, more than 80% have seizures and they're very difficult to control. Uh, the, the, the walking uh, tends to be with flexed arms, uh, tends to be ataxic, and you can see the, the uh, elbows are, are flexed as they, as they walk. And if you go on the Angelman Syndrome Foundation website, you can see some videos of people with Angelman Syndrome. They'll have a big smile. Uh, they'll be walking with their arms uh, uh, flexed up, hands upward, and it's a very characteristic appearance. Uh, so it would be worth taking a few minutes to go on the Angelman Syndrome Foundation website and look at some of their videos. Okay, it's important to understand the genetics of uh, Angelman Syndrome, uh, specifically imprinting and I'm going to just take a couple of minutes and describe what imprinting means. A healthy person receives uh, two copies of chromosome 15, and that's true of, for all the chromosomes, uh, one from the mother and one from the father. However, in the region of the chromosome 15 that is critical for Angelman syndrome, the chromosome contributions from the mother and the father express certain genes very differently. And this is due to the gender-specific phenomenon of imprinting. And this is because the, these areas are methylated. These areas of DNA are methylated differently. And this causes the, the genes from the, the mother to act differently from the genes from the father. So in a normal individual, uh, the maternal uh, Angelman DNA site is turned on and the DNA site from the father is turned off. Uh, and this is uh, in certain regions of the brain, specifically in the hippocampus and the cerebellum, uh, this uh, phenomenon occurs. Uh, therefore, if the maternal contribution is lost, or if it's inactive or mutated, the result is Angelman syndrome. So, in the region uh, 15Q11 to Q13, uh, if that is deleted or, or damaged in some way, uh, and that chromosome comes from the mother, uh, Angelman syndrome will, will occur. 
Uh, however, if the same region occurs in the father, uh, prater willi syndrome will occur. Specifically, the UBA, the UBE3A gene is the uh, Angelman syndrome gene. Uh, it is a ubiquitin protein ligase, and this is an enzyme that in humans is encoded by the UBE3A gene. This enzyme is involved in targeting pro proteins for degradation within cells. Now, protein degradation is a normal process that removes damaged or unnecessary proteins and helps maintain the normal functions of cells, such as brain growth and development. Ubiquitin protein ligase, E3A, attaches a small protein called ubiquitin to proteins that should be degraded. These are proteins that are marked for degradation. Once tagged with ubiquitin, proteins are then degraded by lysosomes, specifically proteasomes. Both copies of the UBE3A gene are active in most of the body's tissues. However, in some regions of the brain, only the maternal copy is normally active. Okay, ubiquitin, ubiquitin ligase uh, is uh, shown on this slide uh, in the upper left-hand corner. You see a blue star over E3, and that represents uh, ubiquitin ligase E3A. There are several different forms of ubiquitin ligase, E1, E2, and E3. Uh, the one that, that uh, is, is missing or mutated or not turned on in Angelman syndrome is the ubiquitin ligase E3A. And you can see that that is the enzyme along with ATP providing the energy for the transfer. Uh, the, the ubiquitin is attached to a, a protein. This is a protein that will be mark for degradation and you can see a series of ubiquitin molecules uh, attached to the protein which will now uh, get into a proteasome which has proteolytic enzymes uh, that uh, will degrade the protein and chop it up into uh, peptides and then amino acids as you can see on the right hand side. And this process is very important for the developing brain, especially in infants whose brains are growing. Uh, you need turnover of these proteins and if this process is blocked then the the growth of the of the brain, growth and development of certain critical brain areas such as the the hippocampus uh, will not occur normally. So how prevalent is Angelman syndrome? Uh, one in 10,000 to one in 20,000 uh, citizens of the United States uh, have Angelman syndrome. Down syndrome is eight per 10,000. To put this in perspective though, if you look in government institutions for people with developmental disabilities, the prevalence is higher. Uh, an estimate of three per, one, per 550 or 55 per 10,000 uh, might be found in, uh, in uh, institutions for people with developmental disabilities. So if you consider all the services provided by uh, state departments of human services, they may provide services to, to 30,000 individuals with developmental disabilities uh, it, it, one estimate would be 165 out of the 30,000 uh, should have Angelman syndrome. I doubt that that uh, if you surveyed uh, state uh, services to people with developmental disabilities, you probably would not find as many as 165 people with Angelman syndrome. So it's probably uh, underdiagnosed uh, because it really isn't considered. These are people that tend to have a lot of seizures, uh, but um, the, the workups uh, you know, usually do not occur because uh, 
Unfortunately, uh, physicians are not well trained in developmental disabilities medicine. And uh, uh, of course, this is uh, something that's been uh, uh, studied and, and there are organizations such as the American Academy of Developmental Medicine and Dentistry, as well as our foundation, the International Foundation for Chronic Disabilities, are very interested in improving uh, physician education about a number of uh, of uncommon, but but not I would not say these are rare, uh, but they are uncommon, and they may be more common than we realize. Looking closely at chromosome 15, uh, the chromosome is divided. All the chromosomes are are composed of two components, a, a P segment and a Q segment, or a short arm and a long arm. The P arm is the short arm and the Q arm is the long arm. Looking over on the left-hand side, you can subdivide the, the P and the Q arms into sections uh, one and two for the Q, and just there's only one segment for the for the P arm, but looking at the Q arm, you can see section one and two, and you can subdivide sections one and two into one through five or or one through six, as you can see on that slide. And the specific uh, segment and the nomenclature that's used is 15Q11 to 15Q13. You can see in the the blue arrow, the up and down arrow, is the region of, of Angelman syndrome or Prader-Willi uh, syndrome, depending upon whether you're talking about the mother's uh, chromosome or the father's chromosome. But this is the the designation that's used, uh, 15Q11 to 15Q13, and you can see where that comes from by looking at this slide. The specific genes in the 15Q11 to Q13 region are shown uh, on the right side and there's a list of them there. You can look them up on Google if you want to learn more about what these genes do. But uh, you can see IC is the imprinting center. Remember that one. And the Angelman gene uh, is shown in red, uh, the UBE3A is, is part of that segment. And the uh, SNRPN gene, uh, which is in blue, which is uh, paternally expressed, is what's not working in, in Prader-Willi syndrome. But this gives you uh, an idea of the uh, of the uh, gene composition of that region. The P gene is a pigment gene. If that is deleted, then uh, the person tends to be have a lighter complexion. And the HERC2 gene uh, is responsible for eye color. Uh, the, the, the GAB genes are GABA genes. And of course, GABA is the most prevalent uh, neurotransmitter uh, so you can see that there are a lot of genes in that region, and the most common cause of Angelman syndrome is a deletion uh, of that, that region. And of course, the, the larger the deletion, the more genes are deleted, and the more severe the, uh, the, the condition. If you have a point mutation in the UBE3A gene, for example, it may not be as severe clinically a uh, condition, but uh, if you're missing your GABA genes, uh, this may have to do with the severity of the seizures. Uh, so uh, the, important, the important point to remember is that a bigger deletion uh, gets rid of more genes and causes a more severe clinical presentation. Now this is a, uh, a another uh, uh, representation of the of the chromosome uh, comparing uh, 
what happens when there's a, a paternal problem versus the maternal uh, uh, problem with, with, the, with that region of chromosome 15. And this uh, shows the same information, the imprinting center, the Snurpin gene for prater willi the UBE3A for Angelman syndrome, uh, depending upon whether you're talking about the father's chromosome 15 or the mother's chromosome 15. This is a very uh, interesting phenomenon of, of imprinting uh, that occurs, which makes the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the mother's chromosome behave differently from the father's chromosome. Now, there, there are actually uh, four mechanisms. Uh, I, I should say there's, there are really five mechanisms, which I'll get into in a minute, but here shows four mechanisms for Angelman syndrome. And what causes Angelman syndrome, if you'll remember, is something wrong with the mother's uh, Angelman region. Uh, that's the 15, Q11 to Q13. A region of chromosome 15 from the mother is what causes Angelman syndrome. And there, there are four ways uh, that that can occur, either a deletion, a uniparental disomy, an imprinting defect, or a specific point mutation in the UBE3A gene itself. And uh, looking at uniparental disomy, uh, what that means is that, that uh, that both of the of the chromosome 15s come from the father. There is no maternal contribution with UPD. So you see the PP means paternal, paternal. That uh, there's no maternal chromosome 15 in that individual. Uh, this is a less common, you know, cause of uh, Angelman syndrome, but it, it does happen. Uh, there are. Uh, some efforts using uh, v uh, vitamins like biotin uh, or uh, folic acid, which promote methylation. And the people with Angelman syndrome from UPD, uh, they're trying to increase the methylation of the Angelman region in the, uh, in the paternal uh, chromosome. It's very hard to do because it's, it's turned off, you know, by the imprinting center. But that's one of the strategies uh, in trying to uh, treat Angelman syndrome. Uh, the imprinting uh, uh, defect, the imprinting center, is the switch uh, that turns off the uh, the uh, the Angelman syndrome gene in the father, but but in the mother's chromosome 15, the imprinting center turns on the Angelman gene, the UBE3A. So if there's some damage uh, to the imprinting center, uh, the gene, it'll be present, but it won't be turned on. Uh, and, you know, if, uh, if there is a defect in the, in the gene itself, a mutation in the UBE3A gene itself, then of course, uh, uh, it will not, uh, uh, you know, do its thing, uh, and and you'll have Angelman syndrome. Now this is the same information, but this this slide shows the the uh, the prevalence or frequency, I should say, of of the of the different types of of Angelman syndrome. Uh, Sixty-five to seventy-five percent have a deletion, 3 to 7 percent have uh, UPD, 5 to 11 percent have a mutation in the Angelman gene, and the imprinting center is damaged in uh, 3 percent. The imprinting center is the, the, the rarest, you know, form of or cause for Angelman syndrome, and the maternal deletion is the most common by far. And the, the paternal UPD and the UBE3A mutations, similar 
uh, percentage, uh, but still they're very uncommon. And the deletion is is the most common. You detect the the deletion with a fish test, but the uh, the paternal UPD and the uh, the uh, the mutation in the um, in the uh, uh, in the chromosome uh, you can detect uh, with a uh, or at least you'll get some hint with the southern blot testing, which I'm going to go into in in just a minute. Okay, here it is. This is a southern blot test. Uh, this is a uh, a uh, type of uh, it's a, a system of of chromatography and electrophoresis where the uh, chromosome 15 segment, the Angelman segment, the 15 Q11, Q13 segment is from the mother and the father are separated out and they are tagged with uh, a label to identify them and uh, put into this electrophoretic field and separated. And you can see on the far left is the normal where there's both a maternal and a paternal component, uh, which is, that's the normal situation. There's the, the father's segment and the mother's segment. And you can see that the, the, the maternal segment migrates a little further, a little faster perhaps in the electrophoretic field. Uh, that may be due to the more methylation uh, that occurs on the mother's uh, segment as opposed to the father's. And then on the far right you see what the Angelman syndrome pattern looks like uh, where only the father's segment is present and the mother's uh, segment is missing. Now what, what could cause that pattern? Uh, you know certainly uh, a deletion um, but also uh, you know, if the if the gene is just not turned on, uh, uh, or if there is a uniparental disomy, uh, that can can also cause the mother's uh, segment to be missing. If you if the father uh, provided both chromosome 15s, and you have, that's uniparental disomy, uh, you can see that you would see no maternal uh, DNA. Uh, you know, on the on the southern blot testing, so so you can't distinguish a deletion from uniparental disomy uh, with this test, but uh, it, it will. Uh, it's kind of a kind of a good screen. And and here is a, a fish test. So if you had a a a uh, the southern blot test showed that the the maternal uh, segment was missing, and you wanted to to distinguish whether this was a deletion or whether it was uniparental disomy. Uh, you do a fish test, and that's a a, a specific uh, 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 probe uh, that that will attach to to the uh, to that region the Q11, uh, Q13 region of chromosome 15. And in this particular uh, slide, you can see on the top of the chromosome, that's a tag uh, showing that th these are chromosome 15s. And then at the bottom, you see the, the uh, with the intact, uh, the, the area lights up, but within the, in the deleted, area there's no uh, there's no tag that attaches because it's just not there it's been been deleted so this is fluorescent in situ hybridization or a fish test and this is a nice slide uh, uh, from the angel and syndrome foundation website um, and shows how to to work up somebody for angelman syndrome this is kind of a flow chart and and what this there are different ways you could do this, but this is this is one way. Uh, you can start with a, a southern blot test. If you have somebody that that you think might have Angelman syndrome, 
uh, and if you have an abnormal uh, southern blot, uh, there are three mechanisms going, this is going to the right, three mechanisms are possible as, as I mentioned. Uh, it could be a chromosome deletion, it could be paternal uniparental disomy, or there could be an imprinting uh, defect. In other words, that's the little switch that, that turns on the, the Angelman gene. That could be defective, so the, the gene doesn't form, and that would, that would also uh, appear as a uh, missing uh, maternal contribution. So then you could do a fish test uh, or a, uh, to see if, uh, if that was the cause uh, to confirm that it's a uniparental disomy for sure. You can do special DNA studies. Uh, and if, uh, if, they, if, if there's an imprinting center defect, you can confirm that with the molecular testing, DNA analysis. Uh, uh, any of you that are interested you can look up how to do that because I, I honestly uh, I don't know the biochemical genetic methodology on this but this is a way you can kind of sort out what the what the mechanism is if the going back to the beginning if the if the uh, if your southern blot was normal and in other words you show both the paternal and the maternal components, uh, there could still be a, a point mutation in the, in the UBA3 gene. Uh, in other words, the gene is still there, but uh, it's just been mutated. There's, a, there's some abnormalities in it, and you need special uh, DNA analysis uh, to uh, make that determination. So, uh, but anyhow, that's, a, that's, a, that's an approach uh, that could be taken if you wanted to, to pinpoint the exact cause. Okay, looking at, at seizures, which is uh, certainly one of the most troublesome uh, symptoms that people with, with Angelman syndrome have, uh, that uh, seizures are more likely to occur in the deletion type, 65% uh, uh, people with uh, a maternal deletion will have seizures. Um, well, I should say, uh, uh, actually, the the uh, on the far left there, I, I misspoke here. The the uh, the frequency of the different types. Of, uh, of Angelman syndrome are shown on the, on the first column. 65% uh, have a deletion, 18% are unknown, 7% uh, have uniparental disomy, 7% have a, a gene mutation, and 2% have an imprinting defect. So these, uh, so unknown is really uh, a type of, of uh, diagnosis. Uh, and with the maternal uh, deletion and the unknown, they both have the, the more severe clinical presentations. You can see uh, they're about 89-90 percent uh, with, with seizures. They have multiple types and uh, the, more of them have the lennox gasto you know, type of really severe type of seizures. That's with the, with the deletion type and the unknown. The other, the other causes have, have, tend to have a milder clinical presentation. Uh, the, the seizures may not be as frequent or severe with uniparental disomy or the mutation or the imprinting uh, defect. So uh, from a prognostic point of view, it, it might be uh, good to know the, the precise uh, a, a genetic diagnosis of Angelman syndrome. And looking at, at the drugs, uh, the, the people with Angelman syndrome have seizures. Uh, many, many types of drugs have been tried. Um, but I want to point out that uh, the valproic acid or Depakote seems to, uh, to work probably better than, than most. Uh, 
and uh, clonopin or clon clonazepam uh, also can be uh, effective, uh, but uh, relatively few end up with total seizure freedom uh, under the best circumstances. Uh, it's important to keep in mind that, that carbamazepine or Tegretol uh, can cause seizure exacerbation. Uh, so it doesn't work very well. It actually makes people worse, although uh, you may occasionally get someone that would benefit from it. I think most experts on Angelman syndrome would stay away from, from Tegretol. Why this is, it's not really clear. It's it's kind of an interesting phenomenon, you know, why uh, there should be a worsening of seizures with, with Tegretol or carbamazepine. And again, looking at the uh, efficacy and tolerability of the seizure drugs, this is just a bar graph of the, of the same information. If you'll just look at the carbamazepine with the real tall uh, red bar there uh, showing the, the uh, worsening uh, with carbamazepine. Uh, but it looks like a valproic acid on the far left and uh, this is Keppra, Levetiracetam uh, or Keppra on the right. They both show uh, more episodes of seizure freedom. Uh, clonazepam is not too bad. Uh, but uh, again, this just points out that, that carbamazepine is probably something you want to stay away from. Now, there, there are some non-pharmacologic uh, treatments. Uh, the ketogenic diet, uh, the low glycemic index therapy, which is basically the ketogenic diet. It's a tweaking of the ketogenic diet. And the vagal nerve stimulator, uh, these are all alternatives. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of information on efficacy of these treatments. Uh, but uh, apparently, some people feel they're, they're worth trying, and uh, primary care physicians need to know about, about these alternatives uh, that uh, they might want to think about in some of their patients. Uh, there are also some additional uh, treatment considerations that, that, that uh, have been brought up. Uh, uh, one is the polypharmacy uh, that, that can occur in these individuals. Uh, when you have a number of, of drugs that are not efficacious, uh, uh, you tend to add and rather rather than remove. Uh, physicians are trained to start uh, medications, but they're very uh, reluctant to discontinue. So uh, when you discontinue, it has to has to be very slow because that can cause the exacerbation of, of seizures. Uh, but the the individuals with Angelman syndrome, uh, especially with the deletion tend to be on multiple drugs. It's not always clear that they're all working. So, so try to, uh, to keep the drugs to a minimum and, and document the efficacy. Uh, the people with Angelman syndrome may not be getting adequate weight-bearing physical exercise. Uh, this uh, plus the drugs can lead to, to, to a greater risk for osteoporosis and fractures. Uh, vitamin D deficiency uh, can be a problem, uh, and there's a risk for for injury from falls. Now these are these are theoretical potential problems. I'm not aware of any studies uh, where a series of people with Angelman syndrome were examined for fractures. I don't know what the fracture uh, incidence is. Uh, in, in people with Angelman syndrome, especially in the adult population, there's very little known about the adult population with Angelman syndrome. Um, in fact, uh, if anyone uh, who happens to be uh, uh, observing this uh, PowerPoint presentation happens to know this, please get in touch with me. I'd like to know more about these issues. Uh, but uh, theoretically, 
uh, that uh, they should be at high risk for low bone mineral density uh, and uh, that would put them at risk for fracture. So, uh, and vitamin D deficiency. Uh, uh, Depakote, which is uh, an effective drug uh, for seizures in Angelman syndrome, is also one of those drugs that, that causes uh, increased breakdown of, of vitamin D and you can have drug-induced uh, vitamin D deficiency. So, and there are some reports of, of, uh, of higher doses of uh, vitamin D helping uh, seizures. It keeps the blood calcium level up and uh, this may lower the seizure threshold. Uh, but again, uh, uh, as far as the specific seizure problem in Angelman syndrome, I don't know of any any good information on this. So in conclusion, uh, there are probably uh, many adults with developmental disabilities with seizures who have undiagnosed Angelman syndrome. And it is important to establish a diagnosis uh, because of the, uh, the features that need to be monitored, knowing about uh, Tegretol, uh, possible risk for vitamin D deficiency, uh, risk for osteoporosis and fracture. Uh, but uh, I guess the bottom line is that more information is needed regarding all these issues, including uh, the optimal seizure management. Okay, uh, that concludes the talk. Thank you very much. Uh, if you would like to get in touch with me, my email address is ifcd.pma at gmail.com. If you're interested in, in other talks in this series, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel uh, at uh, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash philipmay123. Thanks again. Bye-bye.